Okay, guys, so, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at um, the prokaryote cell. Um, we've talked about prokaryotes and eukaryotes. We've been focusing specifically on um, the prokaryote cell for the past few days. And we know that the prokaryote cell is, when we were talking about that, we're referring to uh, bacteria. So we're going to take a look at that a little bit more in depth. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to take a look at this little slideshow here. Um, here's the basic structure of a, of a bacterial cell. And we talked in class about there being four or five basic structures. The cell wall, the cell membrane, the cytoplasm, the ribosomes, and the DNA. Then there's some other structures that we need to focus on that we need to be aware of. We have our capsule, um, we have the flagellum, or flagella, uh, plasmid, which we covered when we talked about um, conjugation, and then we have the pili, or pilus. Um, what these do is, is the cell wall is basically there for structure, support, and it gives the cell wall its shape. The th and we talked about basic shapes of bacterial cells, um, rod, round, and spiral. Um, cell membrane, okay, which we see right here, this yellow uh, layer right inside the cell wall. Um, the cell membrane is the same as, as, a, as a eukaryotic cell membrane. And what it does is, is it acts like a screen door. Um, you know, when you have a screen door, you can let air in, but you kind of keep those bugs, those, those little critters out that, that you don't want uh, inside the house. You've got to think of the cell, uh, cell membrane the same way. Um, it lets molecules, um, such as oxygen and water molecules, uh, pass through the cell membrane, all right, right into the, uh, to the cell. But it also keep... Um, substances out that the cell can't have or that, that could harm the cell. Um, and at the same time, as acting like a screen door, it also encloses all the internal structures that you see here. Moving on in, we have the cytoplasm, okay? This um, looks like almost like tan or beige uh, looking color here. Um, basically what this is, is this is mostly made of water, and it holds all the internal structures, like your ribosomes, like the plasmid, like the chromosome. Okay, all those in internal structures are held uh, within the cytoplasm here. The flagellum, okay, or flagella, um, this is for movement, motility, allows the cell to move. Some can have one, some can have many. And um, I'll show you a, a picture of the, the flagellum in action uh, pretty soon. Ribosomes, we talked about as being little factories. And we know factories make things. So uh, ribosomes are protein factories, which means they produce proteins. Plasmid, we covered when we talked about conjugation. Uh, this circular strand of DNA here. Okay. Um, the plasmid carries the genes for the antibiotic resistance. And they're mostly associated with um, the pathogenic bacteria that cause disease. Um, also, when we talk about uh, this plasmid. This is the DNA that's not needed for re reproduction. Your chromosomal, uh, chromosomal, your DNA right here, this is where um, the instructions for reproduction take place. Okay, so the DNA um, here carries all the bacterial heredity information, what it's going to pass on um, to its offspring, whether it be through asexual or sexual reproduction. Um, moving on, we also have... Uh, the pili right here, okay? And you can see the pili surrounding the entire um, bacterial cell here. Um, the pili allow the bacterial cell to stick to surfaces. And when we talked about conjugation, the pili also allows um, for the transmission of this plasmid DNA into the um, recipient bacterial cell. So if you go back to a, a previous lesson, this cell right here would actually be considered a donor cell because it would donate um, the plasmid, okay? Okay, so as we move forward, we're going to uh, break this down a little bit more. Now, here's another uh, picture of the bacterial cell. Uh, it's a 3D visual here um, where it kind of takes a look at the inside. But my main thing here is I wanted you to see it, but I also wanted you to see the pink and the purple that we have here. Notice purple's thick, uh, pink is thin. What happens is we have gram-positive and gram-negative. To help identify the bacterial cell, um, scientists will stain the cell. 
and, and the cell wall will either be stained pink or purple. If it's stained purple, it's gram positive, which means it has a thick cell wall. If it's stained um, pink, it has a, it's considered gram negative and has a thin cell wall. And I just wanted to uh, show you that a little bit better here. Great, great website um, that we utilize is the Cells Alive website. And you can see right here, okay? Here's the um, gram positive, okay? You can see the difference, the thick, uh, as opposed to the thinness that we have here, okay? And also you can see the flagella that completely, well, flagellum that completely surround um, this bacterial cell. And if you guys ever want to take a look at this website, I, I highly suggest it but it's the cells alive. It tells you um, about all the internal structures. Okay, so I'm gonna close out of that there. Now, as we move forward, um, I also said I wanted to uh, show you about the cell membrane. All right, we talked about the cell membrane acting as a screen door, all right, where it allows substances in. So, and it also keeps substances out. So here's a cell right here, all right? This is the cell membrane. Let's watch a little um, animation here. We're going to see that we have some oxygen molecules here, okay? The cell membrane. Oxygen, mo uh, excuse me. oxygen molecules are what the cell wants, needs them, okay? So they have to pass through that cell membrane. Um, and if there's more outside the cell, then they're going to pass through, okay? We want it to be um, even, an even amount. So here's a little animation of what happens. You can see the molecules that are outside pass in. Okay, and now you have the same concentration, but there was no problem. These molecules passed right through. Okay, show you this one more time here. That's what the cell membrane does. Okay, get out of there. All right, and that's um, an overview of the structure of the cell. Okay, guys, so um, the last piece that we need to show you here is um, the flagellum, okay? I wanted to uh, show you how it moves. So we're going to get out of this slideshow right now, and we're going to go to a little um, YouTube video here. Here you can see the bacterial cell. Again, every time I seem to show you these, you, you see more and more uh, flagellum. So um, as this little video moves, you, you can see how this... Um, whip-like tail here moves. It, it moves very, very rapidly, okay? Here's a different uh, shape, but there's a little structure called the basal body that attaches, and it moves almost like a, like a motor. Uh, it moves really, really rapidly. You can see the two different types of cells here. We got our round, and we have our bacilli and our uh, coccyx um, bacteria. But you can see all the bacteria. You can see their movement. Here we're talking with an individual uh, flagella. But this is basically what this structure does, guys. It, it allows for it to move. Um, and, and bacteria will move when, when there's not a stimuli or a stimulus uh, present. They'll, they'll just move anywhere. But when you have something here, like a stimulus, these bacteria will tend to travel towards it. Uh, it catches their attention. They'll always move towards the stimulus. Okay. And that's, uh, that's it.